Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey joined with my son Jordan Spivey and if you're new to that channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will compare and contrast the advantages and disadvantages of sexual and asexual reproduction. So let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can compare and contrast the advantages and disadvantages of sexual and asexual reproduction. In this video, we will focus specifically on comparing and contrasting the process of binary fission for asexual reproduction and meiosis for sexual reproduction. First, let's complete a quick review of asexual reproduction. Binary fission and mitosis are both forms of asexual reproduction in which a parent cell divides to form two genetically identical daughter cells. Binary fission occurs primarily in prokaryotes like bacteria, while mitosis only occurs in eukaryotes such as plant and animal cells. Binary fission requires less steps than mitosis and happens at a faster rate as a result. Let's take a look at some of the advantages of asexual reproduction with binary fission. First, binary fission occurs in prokaryotic cells which are smaller and less complex than eukaryotic cells. So the process is simpler and faster than mitosis and meiosis. Second, no partner is needed so it uses less energy to reproduce. Third, bacterial populations grow rapidly in favorable conditions since the process is basically DNA and RNA replication and then cell division. This explains why bacteria have one of the largest populations in the world. Their large population gives bacteria a greater chance of survival in changing conditions and environments since some may have favorable mutations that will allow them to adapt and survive. This provides them with the opportunity to outcompete other organisms for nutrients and water. Fourth, frequent mutations can occur since prokaryotes or bacteria cells genetic material is freely floating and aren't contained within a nucleus. These mutations help prevent the entire population from being wiped out by one thing. Freaking mutations can also be a bad thing which I will discuss in a few moments. Now let's take a look at the disadvantages of asexual reproduction with binary fish. First, there are more mutations in asexual reproduction that lead to non-beneficial effects which can hinder or harm the population. Since the offspring are genetic clones of the parent cell, a negative mutation can make asexually producing organisms susceptible to disease and can destroy large numbers of offspring populations. Second, it can be hard for asexually reproducing populations like bacteria to survive and adapt to new environments since most are exact copies of each other. Bacteria with favorable mutations may survive, but most will die off since they do not have these mutations. For example, unfavorable conditions such as extreme temperatures can wipe out entire colonies of bacteria if they do not have mutations that are beneficial in helping them to survive in this environment. Third, since their population is usually close together, Asexually reproducing organisms often have to compete with one another for food and space to survive. Fourth, now this last key point that I'm about to mention is probably the biggest disadvantage of asexual reproduction like binary fission. Since asexually reproducing organisms are exact copies of each other, they have very little genetic variety in their genetic code. This means that one thing can wipe out their entire population since they are all the same. Remember this. The less genetic diversity a population has, the more likely it is to become extinct due to a lack of differences in their genetic code. More genetic diversity provides populations of organisms a better opportunity to survive and adapt to potential threats to their species. And that wraps up the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Now let's do a quick overview of meiosis before we dive into its advantages and disadvantages. Meiosis actually goes through two cycles of PMAT to produce gametes or sex cells which are sperm for males and eggs for females. Remember PMAT is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Meiosis goal is to make daughter cells with half as many chromosomes as the parent cell, unlike binary fission and mitosis that produce daughter cells with the same amount of chromosomes as the parent cell. Meiosis also produces daughter cells that are genetically different from the parent cell, which leads to more genetic variation or differences in a population, which I will discuss in a moment. Probably the most important part of meiosis is during prophase one, which is when crossing over occurs. When chromatids cross over, homologous chromosomes trade places of genetic material resulting in new combinations of alleles for a certain trait like hair color, eye color, and height. 
Crossing over is important for species survival because it provides us with more genetic variation. Remember, as I stated in previous videos, the more genetic variety a species has, the more likely it is to survive because one thing can't wipe out its entire population. Now let's take a look at the advantages of sexual reproduction. First, offspring and sexual reproduction have characteristics of both parents. They are not exact copies of their parents, which makes them uniquely different, leading to more genetic variety. Second, variation in sexual reproduction leads to more variety and diversity. This basically means that no two people look exactly alike. Since there are differences in their genetic makeup, then there will be differences in their physical makeup as well. Third, sexual reproduction produces genetic variation which provides organisms a better chance to adapt and survive in a changing environment. Fourth, genetic variation through sexual reproduction helps prevent the extinction of animals and plant species. Now let's take a look at the disadvantages of sexual reproduction. First, sexual reproduction does require a mate or partner in humans. Although other species can reproduce without a male partner, which is known as obligate parthenogenesis, humans cannot reproduce on their own. There must be a sperm and egg involved in the process. Second, that leads us into our second point. It takes time and energy to find a mate and reproduce. Some individuals may not find a partner. Third, Favorable genetics or traits may not be passed on to offspring, for example, a certain height, eye color, hair color, and etc. Fourth, sexually transmitted diseases can be easily contracted. Fifth, fewer offspring are born and more time is required for the offspring to develop. Basically, the offspring must be cared for for a much longer period of time in sexual reproduction in order for them to fully develop and be able to independently take care of themselves. Think about the usual ages in humans from being a newborn baby to approximately 16 years or older before most humans can fully support and take care of ourselves on our own. And that's our video for today. Now let's see how proficient you are with comparing and contrasting the advantages and disadvantages of sexual and asexual reproduction. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below. Remember, 80% are high for proficiency. Record your results in your proficiency sheet and if you don't get the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Peace and have a positive, productive day. I am inevitable.